around here. And this is a reply to Scaligrim Nilsson, uh, or Scaligrim site. Uh, he did a video called Falchion versus Padded Jacket. Uh, he states in there that the gambeson that he tests is not uh, totally historically accurate. Most modern gambesons aren't. There are maybe two to four layers of cloth, uh, not even exactly the right type of linens or anything, uh, and a layer of thick felt padding or, or, or something to that degree, some kind of, of uh, something to add padding to it. Yes, that can turn a blade. If the blade hits it incorrectly, not tip first uh, on a belly or a body. We've shown this over and over again. Uh, if you try to use the full length of the blade, it can't cut through that many fibers. The fibers are stretched out lengthwise, and each place that that blade's making contact increases how much forward the, the force the blade has to have to slice through. So with the give of the body and it eating up the energy, it can't deliver enough force to do so. But we've tested also on a brick with ballistics gelatin on it and uh, padding. Uh, we were able to cut through the padding, but not all the way through, but still break the brick underneath it when we set it up on a flat surface. We've also tested it with mail over the padding. So that was to see if you could damage a clavicle, a rib, uh, the shoulder, because the human body is not exactly like most of these targets we test where it's just ballistics gelatin, just a bottle filled with water. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is reply back to him, he's ballistics gelatin over a wooden pole. I cut it with the uh, poor quality uh, gambesons or Akatin, whatever you want to arming jacket. Uh, I'm going to use this today. Uh, this is our coarse, uh, tightly woven linen sent by Andreas Noel. Uh, they're actually sacks that were sent from Germany. In the middle, I have padding. Of course, I've got padding inside. It's kind of hard to show that. But this will be a uh, double layer of padding uh, and approximately, I'm thinking here, like eight layers of this we'll start off with. I'm going to test that. If it's able to go through there, uh, we will double it and see how that performs. Because, yes, over shoulders and stuff, it'd be harder on arms. You could have extra padding, yes, underneath your mail or just to stand alone gamison. First, I'm going to start off with my uh, Norman uh, sword or my late century Viking sword. It's very much like an Ulfberg, and due to being be made out of EN45 steel, it behaves very much like one as well, and it is razor sharp. And that's just a testimony of the sword and the amount of force it takes to cut this type of rolled wet newspaper, or poor man's tatami as I like to call it. And this is an over three inch roll. Now Scaligrim and blood and iron might not agree with this cut. A lot of people who are into unarmored, like uh, Bloss Fetchton, not Pornus Fetchton, from some of the German names, some of you will recognize that. It means unarmored combat, or for dueling, wearing uh, cloth, or maybe light cloths. Uh, yes. Uh, their cuts work extremely well, but this was an extreme cast blow, uh, as proposed by Roland Warzek and I, and it cut through this large three-inch roll beautifully and perfectly. That's the best you're going to get on this type of material. Uh, it was easy, didn't take me much effort, but the idea is, everyone knows I throw my blows from hell, H-E-L, not the other hell. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm going to, just like in the sagas, they talk about taking arms and legs off, I'm going to throw these type of blows, these kind of shots you throw from behind a shield in uh, sword and shield combat, like you're in the Migrational Age or the Viking Age, uh, like they would be throwing against fibrous material, like gambesons, uh, leathers that somebody might be wearing, mail even, to try to break bones under it, which proven that is theoretically possible to injure the guy badly through his mail and pack. But anyway, let's go ahead and put that first layer of padding on there and see how this fares. And just to bring up the casting oh. again, it can be from behind oh. the shield and in this position and still be cast out. If you watch what happened with the sword, it slipped forward in my hand and I'm using this uh, Godschild or uh, Brazil nut pummel to keep it from sliding out of my hand. Just the early migration of uh, swords with the uh, different types of tea cozy arms. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the same kind of attack. So if I do a very light attack, it doesn't really say much about what they're doing. Do the exact same cut, like I think I can go through this and let's we'll see what happens. Ooh. Well, we definitely made it into it, but the amount of fibrous material and padding, because it's not able to bounce as much as it would on a human body, only allowed it to go in. It'd be closer to a leg than a stomach. Yes, be closer like being over the shin bone or something, not even the uh, actual calf. So, and it can, it can only compress so much to the actual flesh before it starts hitting a solid surface. 
So yes, we cut into this, but is this better? If you were to get hit in the forearm in the midi area, would this be better than not having it? Uh, I'm gonna say yes, because the sword was completely able to cut it in half without this protection. And we're gonna check in a second and see how deep that really truly was. So let's go ahead and take that off. I can't say that that would have made it to the bone. I don't know how much flesh it was going through. If it was against the bone, it might've cut into the bone, but I doubt, I, I doubt it would've made it completely through. Because lots of people that I know uh, online uh, agree that if you cut through one of these, you could pretty much take a man's arm off. At least do it through the forearm, possibly, or at least through one of those. So we've made it somewhat into it. This may have saved his arm and made it only a wound. We cut through the material, but I'm going to tell you, I might misjudge because I was counting the material. We only have six layers of the cloth and one layer of the padding. I don't know if it's possible for y'all to see this. So it's not very thick. This isn't very thick gamma If this is quilted together, uh, it would be about a quarter inch thick at the most, maybe a quarter inch or lower. So you could have much thicker gamma on these areas. So that's why I'm going to double this over. This will give us 12 layers and a double layer of padding. Let's see how it fits. Uh, about an inch. They made it into about an inch of the three inch roll. So like I said, this could have saved a man's leg. This, this could have kept you from losing it completely. You would have been wounded. This would be a wound. Uh, then again, if the arm or leg moved with it, was it planted stationary, it may have done even less damage. I do have a razor sharp blade here, just to make sure that everybody understands that I'm not cheating in any manner here in this type of gambit. So the difference is, Scal admits that what he was using is a modern rep rep reproduction or the representation of it. And yes, it's not needed to be in the same manner. Most of it, modernly, since we don't use edges against it, doesn't need as many layers of coarsely woven cloth or tightly woven thin cloth, which there is one, some, some layers of that in here too on the pattern. Forgot to add that. So you had six, uh, which would be eight, counting the two thinner layers and then the actual felt canvas. I was really impressed with that, but I'd like to add this. During the 9th century, during the migrational period, up into the 10th and 11th century, there were people wearing leg wraps. Uh, it was a style or a fashion. They were kind of like bandages and they were... Uh, wrapped around the leg and overlapped many, many times. And we don't know if they wore something like a kiai, uh, like the Japanese wore under it to help bunch their baggy pants together uh, and to put it over it. And that could have been made out of some kind of leather or hide. Uh, we don't know for sure if they're going to battle, if they would be smart enough. They probably would. They had splendid armor earlier period. Uh, in the Vendel period, we find splendid armor like during Sutton Hu and so on. So yes, you could have splints under there and hide them beautifully with that fashion. Uh, I doubt they did that before. But let's go ahead and say that they just had heavy canvas on their leg. Uh, and we can cut this. And if you hear a chopper going on, it's been doing this for about 20 minutes now. It's an unmarked chopper because they had this in. Uh, and uh, we have no idea what they're doing. Uh, if they can't land at the hospital, uh, somebody's training with somebody. I feel like GTA 5 is going on and uh, I should be worried for snipers and maybe I should get out my uh, anti aircraft. Uh, launcher here or something, I don't know. But I just want to add that in because it is an unusual event today. I, I think if I was dreaming or not, what's going on, why is this thing just circling over my house? Anyway. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. Oh! That absorbed a lot of shot, of course. Let's see what actually happened with the double layer. The reason it took our pell out is I hate doing that to my swords. It, it does a lot to the sword trying to get through there. We did not make it through at all. With the double thickness of what we used earlier, which allowed us to only go an inch into this material, so about an inch maybe, we could not make it through. I said I can't hate doing that to my sword, but just in case anybody is wondering if the step cut would do more, I'll try getting it one more time, just to see. Or if you like, maybe do something where I slice across or something. Um, uh, actually, Matt Easton talks about that, like cutting where the blade actually can ride on the target. We'll just see. That was more of a push, I think, than the cast where it's more speed. Might have had a better chance of cutting in. Might more of a draw cut, if you could tell the way I pulled it. That's why I pulled it over. It's not able to make it through. Let's double check just to make sure. But I would say that the heavy gambeson that's more historically accurate if it was quilted together, or the possible amount of leg wrapping that someone could have put on could have protected their actual leg in combat. Because none of these are through.
And the drawing motion, surprisingly, had the best result, but still only made it the same distance. I think it had the longest cut. Could have been angle in the way it hit, but they both went about the same amount of layers. Yeah, the exact same amount of layers. From what I'm feeling, it feels like it's stopping the exact same amount. The last, I would say, three or four layers of cloth, I'd say about four, was not able to make it through, and all we have is bludgeoning damage. You can see where it just wounded the, uh, the, the uh, target. So, yes, you could have damaged the uh, bone, possibly, if it was over the shin bone, maybe, but with that much padding, I'm not sure. So, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, help us out on Patreon if you can. We've got a lot of problems right now with the... Uh, uh, boycott that they're having where a lot of people don't want to advertise on YouTube. But anyway, help us out on that, and I hope you enjoyed our episode, and uh, Scott, like, reply on it if you like, if you want, and uh, far better.